Muted participants. We have one. Okay. I will exit Zoom if no one else enters. Hello, everyone. Well, hello, the one. We're going to get started in a few minutes. Let's give it, no, let's give it five minutes and we'll start. We'll go through this presentation and see if there's any questions. Thoracic spine. How was your day, Rob? My day's been great. Yes. Yeah, how about good. your day? You know, I'm a bit crazy. I'm yeah. a bit crazy, to be honest, but it's crazy good, I guess. There's a lot of um, things to do now. <laughs> Goes from like no work to being overwhelmed at times. That's just the way of life, I think, right? Like It's weird. It all comes at once and then or nothing. So it's... it's it's hard to find that happy medium where you're busy but not too busy. Very... Hello, Aaron. You have joined. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like all at once and then nothing for hours. So it's just, I wish it was spread out over the day evenly, mm -hmm. but you can't get what you want in this life, I guess. You don't always get what you want. Wow, we got a question already. How much of a factor would you say that T-spine play is a factor in overhead mobility? Very good question. Quite a bit. Um, we have the, I always look at Rob just to get the approval. Um, you have the scapular thoracic joint, right? So you have your scapula that moves when you reach your arm up, right? So your scapula moves quite a bit. Two to one ratio is what they usually say, right? So Rob's scapula here is moving upwards. Scapula thoracic means scapula on the thorax, meaning on the T-spine. So if your thoracic spine, let's say if he's kyphotic and he has a very slouch posture, now try to reach up as high as you can with the slouch posture. Doesn't happen so well. Now Rob sit up straight. You can see you get more extension. So I think there's huge implications of this. And like we, we're gonna start the, the slides, but um, it's often neglected. So I think, I think the answer to that question is, is the big part. What about you, Rob? Yeah, couldn't agree more. And I think it's important when you're looking at someone's shoulder mobility to take the thoracic spine into account as well, because yeah, depending on kind of their trunk angle, what like what might look like like a very limited shoulder yeah. might in fact be um, <coughs> might be a back issue. Yeah, might be, it might be a back issue. Yeah, or the same thing. What what seems like glenohumeral that ball and socket yeah. could be like. A, limitation of scapular thoracic as well yeah lots of things can limit that upward rotation of the scapula and then again you're going to get kind of that apparent uh, shoulder limitation that can be coming from the upper back yeah well yeah and that's why we always like I typically give thoracic exercises to shoulder patients vice versa shoulder exercises for thoracic patients um, and you mentioned the upper cross syndrome so yeah that's that's definitely something that um, is a pattern some people agree with it, some people don't with the syndrome. I, for me, it's not a diagnosis, but I think it, there's patterns in most people and I agree with that, that Jonda uh, upper and lower cross syndrome to a certain extent. So yeah, huge implications you have for um, both, yeah, the thoracic area and the shoulder. It's interesting, it's involved in everything, but I feel like there's not much time spent on it. Um, I think a lot of people spend, I'm just gonna shut off that heating unit. I think if people spend a lot of time on neck and back, which is very important, but the thoracic spine, like something I'm treating more and more now and getting a lot of good results with, so very important. Um, we're gonna go to screen sharing here and then we're gonna get, hello Shahad, we're gonna get a short presentation Today won't be, well, I always say it won't be too long, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, so the idea is to go over a bit of thoracic spine anatomy and um, some important facts and things like that and spend some time on exercise. I think that's pretty important. Um, the, the anatomy, again, we try not to go into crazy amounts of detail, but we'll go into enough that will make sense for everyone. And yeah. Kind of go from there and people join in we'll we'll uh fill them in i guess um, 
So well, let me just lower this down. So actually, maybe you don't want to see my face from up close. So, and the fan that's above us, the heating unit, will quiet down in a sec here. So I just turned it off. So we have thoracic spine rehab right here. I'm just going to make the orientation perfect. There we go. So much easier to just have the tripod. So we have the thoracic spine. So it's a complex role like we discussed. It's involved in the shoulder, involved in the neck, involved in the low back. It's kind of that medium area. Um, it can be overlooked. So a lot of the times uh, certain issues in the thoracic spine can be missed or not worked on. It's, so it's a load transfer between the upper and lower body, right? So you have upper body being the neck and above, the lower body being the thoracic spine and below. You have a significant amount of rotational motion movement in, in the thoracic spine. And we'll touch on that a little bit later. It's a site for muscle and connective tissue attachments from neck, head, shoulder blade, clavicle, lumbar spine and pelvis and rib cage. So a huge um, attachment point. It's involved in breathing and protection for vital organs, heart and lungs, and there's 12 vertebrae. Uh, there's a little chick there too, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was not responsible for adding that specific picture. Chicks so, might also have 12 thoracic vertebrae. This is true. I can't confirm or deny. I do not know, yeah. I didn't take, betting man. I didn't take this, the chick course. <laughs> so it can follow the pain radiation, can follow ribs across the chest, you can have it right in the thoracic spine, the scapular area, the sternum, upper limbs. So you being in the cervical spine, you can get some radiation into the lumbar spine. You can have pain with breathing, pain with movement. Um, so a lot of the times, yes, the pain's in the back, but you can get pain right in the rib area too. So radiating up your chest and the side of your body. Um, so it's important to, to know that, that the pain is pretty diffuse. Like you can have it pretty much anywhere. <clears throat> And we got Rob next here for the thoracic spine. Just a little bit of anatomy. Yeah, so we'll just kind of like, we'll kind of brush over it. And of course, if anyone has any, any questions or wants to get like a little more in depth on a certain point, just um, make sure to let us know too. I think it's important to know too that, and Sunny mentioned that there's a lot of like, your important organs are, are kind of inside that thoracic cage, which is why it's structured as it is. But the thoracic spine, more so than maybe like the neck or the low back, um, it can have a lot of um, like kind of like red flags to watch out for, I guess. So mm -hmm. if, um, if you do have like pain in this area or if you're assessing or treating somebody with pain in this area, it's important to like watch out for those red flags. Um, like especially, I mean like heart issues, lung issues, cancer, those kinds of things can all present as thoracic spine pain. So um, that's another important kind of, kind of anatomy little tidbit. But, um, but yeah, I mean, basically speaking, um, the thoracic spine is part of that vertebral column. You can jump ahead there if you like. Oh yeah, that's good. So we have um, those 12 thoracic vertebrae. Um, the big things that sort of like differentiate those from the vertebrae in your neck and your low back are um, well, a few different things. So yeah, so your, your spinous process here. So um, on zoom, kind of that, well, spinous process. On here, it's kind of the vertical one. They, um, they sort of, they overlap more than they do in other parts of the back. So you don't appreciate it from this, this image, but um, they kind of have that downward angulation to them. The, the big thing that makes the thoracic vertebrae unique is that they attach to the ribs. So they're gonna have, um, not to get too technical, but sort of on the body of the vertebrae, they'll have little um, demi facets on the vertebrae above and below where, that, where the head of the rib is going to attach. And then on the transverse process, they're gonna have another little facet there. Um, again, another little rib attachment. And then um, from here, that rib will be coming around kind of up this way to the, to the front of the chest wall. So yeah, so those ribs are kind of what makes the area unique. They, um, they, make, it, they make it a more stable area of the back. So you're gonna have relatively less movement in the thoracic spine um, compared to the neck and compared to the low back. Um, the little joints that we have between the vertebrae too, you can maybe jump a slide if you want to. Oh yeah, okay. So the little joints that we have between each, each um, thoracic vertebra, they're, they're, they're kind of oriented a little bit more horizontally, which um, just kind of lends itself better to, like, to rotation in the T-spine, like Sunny mentioned. And you can sort of imagine that with like forward bending and with extension of the back, those ribs are gonna prohibit much movement there anyways. Um, 
so yeah, that's that's like the thoracic spine in, in a nutshell. It's also, um, when you're thinking about like pain or injuries in that area, you've also got to consider that there's like a ton of overlying musculature too. So this guy obviously is just bones, but we've got the, the whole shoulder girdle back here, of course. So we have um, like the scapula and then this is the humerus or the upper arm and the clavicle or the collarbone that would be going kind of to the front, of, like anteriorly on this guy. But um, if, you, if you remember like all the muscles over top there, you've got like your deeper ones, like your rhomboids, levator, big trapezius muscle over top. The lats are gonna um, run through this area a little bit, as well as all those big um, spine, kind of erector spine a muscle groups too. So um, yeah, so it's good to be able to differentiate like muscle pain in this area, um, like shoulder girdle pain versus the muscles that are gonna move the thoracic spine versus something like, uh, like maybe a joint problem a little bit deeper. And then yeah, like breathing wise too, this area is obviously very important. So you've also got like, as, as well as the shoulder girdle muscles and including some of the shoulder girdle muscles, you've got the, the muscles that are responsible for breathing. So um, this one shows like the diaphragm pretty well, um, kind of this like convex muscle down here. And with inspiration and expiration, that's going to, to kind of fill the lungs and then allow them to sort of passively empty. Um, yeah. So a lot of the times, like thoracic issues, people are gonna get discomfort with breathing, whether it's because as you breathe in and out, those ribs are gonna rotate on the, on the thoracic vertebrae in the back. So if you have some kind of like joint dysfunction back there, that can be provocative. You've also got muscles that are working, like both kind of your primary and your accessory breathing muscles that can, that can be painful. Um, intercostals, for example, which would be the little pink spaces between the bony ribs there, um, as shown from the front view. And um, yeah, so yeah, breathing. Very important. This is an interesting slide. So whiplash, so motor vehicle accident, you get rear-ended, for example. Uh, the thoracic spine contributes up to 33 and 21% of movement occurring during neck flexion and rotation. So it's involved in the neck motion. Acute thoracic spine pain is reported in 66% of cases. So quite common. Um, it occurs from forceful loading or eccentric contraction of posterior thoracic structures such as the traps or trapezius muscles. 23% of individuals complaining of thoracic pain one year post injury. So we see a lot of motor vehicle accidents, <clears throat> um, especially here in this climate. And we, we work with quite a few clients and we, we realize that some cases can be longer. It's one of those injuries that you can have a client for quite some time with, with, with issues with pain. So. Quite important to note, I mean, if you start treating the thoracic spine, maybe you could change these numbers, um, get people used to movement, and then get them back to, to full activity. Athletes, so <clears throat> you have this guy flying through the air, which is actually good, because you got the thoracic spine involved quite a bit there. It's side bending, it's rotating, you got the scapular thoracic joint all the way above the head. So um, it's a critical component of athletic functional kinetic chains. Uh, it can often be overlooked in terms of specific evidence-based exercise prescriptions. So research is kind of not all over the place, but I looked at a lot of articles and they'd take like 30 different exercises and try to um, support those exercises. They know mobility is important, for instance, but they can't say one exercise is better than the other. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit of study being done on this, but um, no conclusive results yet for like a specific exercise program. Uh, the thoracic spine contributes to 55% of the total force and kinetic energy during a throw. So for baseball, for example, 80% of the total available trunk axial rotation is found here. Um, and this is an interesting stat, three times higher shoulder and elbow, sorry, three times more likely higher shoulder and elbow injury in softball players with low trunk rotation mobility. So low trunk rotation mobility looks like it translates to threefold uh, chance of having an injury. Regional interdependence, I like this word, meaning that one region depends on the other. So you could have a thoracic spine injury that affects the shoulder or vice versa. So everything's like a kinetic chain, right? So like that top point, everything functions together um, and things have to work right. Especially with athletes, everything has to work correctly to, to perform well. So it's interesting to, to see that stat. Exercises, we'll spend some time on exercises today. So um, I'll read them out and then we'll go through them. So mobility exercise, you have thoracic extension on a foam roller, thoracic rotation, seated side flexion rotation, motor control, we have bird dog, 
uh, flexion extension and a quadruped motion, uh, wood chops, which will do all those. Work capacity, so now more endurance. We have the Y lift, power wheel, and strength. We have deadlift and medicine ball um, throws. So we're gonna actually do all those exercises right now. Rob and I, <laughs> I think, have everything set up. We're gonna have a good workout. So we're gonna go through these exercises briefly um, and show you how they look like. And I'm gonna stop screen sharing with the Zoom people. And, oops. What we're gonna do is let's go through these exercises. So Rob, we got a thoracic extension on a foam roller and you know, he's got it all set up. So I'm just gonna point this down here. Actually, you know what? There we go. So Rob is set up right behind me there. So thoracic extension on a foam roller. So he's raising his arms above his head. I heard a crack, I think. Me too, yeah. yeah. Well, did that feel good? Felt great. Good. So yes, continue. You, you need to... Cracks are fine. Something pops and clicks, it's okay. As long as it doesn't hurt. If it cracked and he couldn't breathe, then <laughs> I'd be taking him to the hospital. And then I can also demo the, um, I know the segmental one here too. So you could, yeah. What would you do for parameters, Rob? Um, like really whatever feels good, I think. Yeah. But, um, but you could aim for something like, I don't know, 10 reps at a time? Yeah. What would you do for this one? I would say so, yeah, 10 reps a minute, and just kind of go for it. With these exercises, so if you're limited in mobility, this is a good exercise. Actually, if you're limited in anything, it's good to do. This is, I do this every other day. Um, so the idea what we're trying to show people is to assess yourself, right? So figure out what your symptoms are, write them down, and then look at your mobility, right? So if you're looking at the thoracic spine, if we back up a little bit, um, you have your thoracic spine. So if you cross your arms across your chest and do some motions, you can figure out where you're limited, right? So if you're facing a mirror or a camera, you twist one way, I twist the other way, you can see it's not as far, then you know you have a limitation in right rotation. Or if you extend, right um you have a limitation extension so you need to do those exercises so the idea is to like kind of play around right go elbow to, to opposite knee now we're working on segmental motions we're looking at rotation side flexion and flexion you can go the opposite way and do other things so figure out where your mobility issues lie and then go from there right so if you're significantly restricted in mobility then you're going to do mobility exercises if you've got strength issues you're going to do some strength um, yeah, and that was kind of the other point, so seated side flexion rotation, so going to elbow to opposite knee, you can see I'm pretty stiff there, holding for 30 seconds, <sighs> holding 30 seconds there, right, um, pretty easy to do, that you can do anywhere, um, we have thoracic rotation there too, that's one you can yeah. do like in sitting, yeah, so just like how it is for your leg, you can use the back of your chair here too. Uh, that one you can also do press the in frame here kind of from like a four point position with a bent elbow and rotating up and around yeah and then threading through a couple of examples of that thoracic rotation then we got mortar control so kind of the neuromuscular connection using things correctly we have static exercises so a bird dog rob can show um, We've done this before for the back. You can see this one, so he's going opposite leg to opposite hand, extending. You can see that his low back there is, is pretty flat, so we wanna keep that nice and flat. Very important, very good mortar control exercise. So everyone thinks this is core and low back. True it is, but it also challenges the thoracic spine, so, and the neck as well, so you have a good dynamic exercise. There's also uh, the flexion extension and quadruped, so yeah. cat cow or cat camel. Um, so coming up like that, causing a lot of flexion and then going all the way down, just like that. So you can do that for a minute at a time. Very good exercise for that. You can see clearly that you're getting a lot of kyphosis, so that bend in the spot, right, the thoracic spine. We also have the one that Judy actually showed us last time was quadruped again, but doing protraction and retraction with the scapula. Oh, yeah. So you could use this as well. So now what he's doing is 
scapular push-ups, you could call them. So going up and down like that, getting the scapulae involved, still using the thoracic spine, right? So that's a very good exercise to do as well. Um, yeah, there's wood chops we could set up. Everyone's done wood chops. Well, not done, maybe everyone's seen wood chops. So if we're coming around the corner here, so what I have is bed, right? So coming from this up position, downwards, holding for a couple seconds, and going back up slow. What I always tell people to do is have their head follow their hands so they're not like twisting their body. Um, so coming, following as a unit, coming back up, doing the other side. So like three sets of seven or three sets of 10 is a good one. This one's really easy to, to change. So now you can work on different segments, right? Different muscles. Now we have shoulder, or sorry, waist height, twisting like this back and forth. And then you also have <coughs> going from a low position. So like upward wood chops. So coming up, down, down. Up and down, just like that. Right, so that's getting into work capacity. Um, sorry, motor control. We also got work capacity, so looking at more endurance kind of stuff. So we're obviously gonna grab an exercise ball. some Y's on, some Y lifts on the ball. So Rob's right here, there's actually a really good view. <laughs> so he has his thumbs up and he's lifting his shoulders, blades back and together. So same thing, three sets of 10 or, or three sets of seven for this one, um, getting that retraction. So we're kind of going in order of difficulty, right? So mobility we started with, that everyone should do, this strengthening stuff, we're kind of progressing. So. We, if we look into work capacity for so for strength, um, and this is still kind of the static strength, so meaning you're keeping your spine neutral, you're not moving while doing the exercise, for example. Um, using an ab wheel or a barbell is a good idea. Um, let me just set this up. You can see that there. And then we're gonna set this up here. So. You can use an ab roller. Ab roller will probably be a little bit harder than this way. Um, for demonstration purposes, and I don't have an ab wheel, I have a barbell. <laughs> so um, what you're gonna do for this one, the biggest thing is keeping your spine neutral, right? So you don't wanna be like arching too bad this way or kind of letting it cave in. You wanna keep the back straight and tight, keep the shoulder blades together. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly let this slide forward And then come back up. So you have like your back, you have your core, everything like that. So that's a good exercise. I do that one until fatigue, so burnout, um, just until you feel it in your core and your back. That's a very good exercise. If now we go into more advanced stuff, we don't have a medicine ball, but we can make do. So getting more advanced now would be to do like a deadlift, right? So if you're looking at a deadlift, um, very good exercise for O back, mid back, you have your hamstrings involved. So that's a very good exercise to do. Um, then you have medicine ball throws. <laughs> this will be easier to do, you know, when you're in the gym or when you, um, have access to a gym again. You can also use like rubber bands too, so you could do quick motions with a rubber band. Um, again, for demonstration purposes, Rob and I are gonna use a volleyball, which clearly is not weighted. So if you look at Rob, we have him tossing the ball to me, and he's using a twisting motion. I'm twisting too, but you can't see it. He grabs it, twist, throws it, grab, twist, throw it, Right? And then you can do a couple that way and switch orientation. And the idea with these ones is you're, you're sort of working like that power system a little bit more. So um, kind of like strength with a bit of a speed component to it. Not so much with the volleyball, of course, but, no. but with something a bit heavier. 
or against a, an elastic band where we had sort of those control twists before when we were working on that, uh, those earlier strength exercises. And then of course you can kind of make it a bit quicker and more aggressive as you sort of work into that power a bit more. Um, yeah. Those ones you always want to do like a good warm up first and make sure that you're physically ready for it. Yeah, so those mobility exercises we covered, good warm up to do. Um, yeah, so that's some exercises, right? So if you look at the strength, static strength versus dynamic strength, static would be doing that ab roller, doing a, um, a deadlift, so that's a neutral spine, you're not moving your spine. Versus the throws is more dynamic strength, so more advanced. So like, let's say if you just got the injury, you probably don't want to start with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have you know minimal pain and you want to push things a bit, then doing these segmental motions is very good. So um, we kind of went through the order of progression. So mobility, anyone can do, always good to keep up with. The strength stuff we showed progress that way. Don't start with more of the dynamic motions. Yeah. Anything to add, Rob? No, I think that's perfect. I think it can be a little confusing talking about like dynamic and static yeah. because like with the deadlift, for example, or with the, the ab roll out, like your body's moving, mm -hmm. but we're talking about like the spine as being kind of static. Uh, or the, like the uh, the bird dogs, for example, again, we had that limb movement, yeah. the static spine, uh, versus like, yeah, the rotational movements where we have uh, the movement through the spine. Yeah. So, yeah. Very important points, yeah. So that's kind of in a nutshell. I know we kind of blew through this, but when we're not doing all the reps and sets of exercise, it's not too hard to go through. <laughs> so um, with that, we kind of went in the order of progression and covered anatomy. Again, if you're noticing like severe pain, uh, clicking and popping with severe pain, difficulty breathing, not just pain while breathing, but like you can't get enough air in your lungs, uh, lots of point tenderness, so light touch is hurting quite a bit. Um, dizziness, like that kind of stuff, double vision, then go to the hospital after one of these injuries. Like if you got a car accident, it's serious, go to the hospital. Um, this, these exercises are going to be again for the people the moderate, min minimal to moderate pain um, and progress kind of from there. So yeah, we'll wait a couple of minutes for questions. If not, we will let everyone eat their lunch. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> So a couple minutes for questions and yeah, I'll make a post today about the ankle as well. Stay tuned for that. And I got to figure out what to do for next week for if we're going to do like three days or one day or what's going on. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. I don't know. More injuries. We need more recommendations. So yeah, that was quick and efficient though. Wow. That was, that was good. Yes. Make it simple. Spent more time exercising than usual, so so we'll let you guys go for now. Um, if you have any questions, just let us know, and then I can respond. Like you can just email or sorry, message us on Instagram, and kind of go back and forth from there. And if you want any research articles, we got plenty of research articles for everything. So let us know. Other than that, guys, you have a good long weekend. Enjoy. If you're in Alberta, the weather's gonna be good. If you're not, no clue. Uh, <laughs> We'll, we'll catch you guys next week, all right? See you guys later. Rob says bye. Bye.